All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else? And the video I'm bringing you today, we are going to go through my Magicka Templar build for the Markarth patch. Now, uh, this is the build that I found out works pretty well for me. I did a lot of testing, guys. I did a lot of Magplar testing uh, a couple weeks before the AAP event, a little bit during it, and then the last couple days afterwards, just testing different gear combinations and everything. And this is, this is what I enjoy the most so far. So, um, yeah. I'm going to dive into the gear. I'm going to do what I always do. Go through consumables, go through gear, go through uh, the skills and everything, alternatives. And then I'm going to explain why I chose what I chose. Uh, because, yeah, this class isn't in a super great spot for solo PvP, in my opinion. If you guys saw my class tier list. Uh, yeah, we don't have to dive into that. But let's dive into the build. Um, as far as consumables go, running Bewitch Sugar Skulls, this is just the best bang for your buck tri-stat food it's fantastic uh i'm also running tripods and immovable pots immovable pots will be invaluable on a magic templar uh just being able to go front bar to finish off combinations is super important so running movable pots is very important uh detect pots and tripods those are the three potions i use on a magic templar now i'm a breton uh, argonian works dark elf works high elf works you're gonna have to adjust your enchants depending on what uh, you have so if you're a high elf or dark elf, uh, you'll your recover or your enchants and your jewelry will look different than mine. It one race isn't really better than the other; they're just different. You get different strengths. You can adjust the recovery to how you see fit uh, with enchants or with your Munda stone, and you can basically offset it. But I I think Breton's personally I think Breton is the best, but to each their own. Uh, yeah, you can make it work with any race. Just make some adjustments. Now, first thing we're running, Batistrand's perfected lightning staff. This is just, guys, you, if you've been in PvP in the last two or three months, you've seen the beam. And if you've seen the beam, you know how strong it is. It's it's worth running two-piece spell pen. It's the most damage for a two-piece you can get. Uh, and yeah, you have a dot that you cannot purge that does AoE. And so that's going to be extremely value for this build, which I've been joking around calling it the Plarnado. Um, yeah, it... It's a really good set. Uh, Magic Templar really lacks a lot of burst. I'll go into that later Later on. Uh, you kind of need to run procs on a Magic Templar. Other classes you can get away with not running procs. It's not best, but you can get away with it. It's really, really hard right now to solo 1vx without procs. So just go get get the Vatistrans Lightning Staff, make it sharpened, call it a day, be happy. Uh, back bar. I know you guys are shocked. It's an else video, but I got Daedric Trickery on the back bar. Uh, I think Daedric Trickery is fantastic for a few reasons. Uh, number one, it's one of the best back bar defensive sets you can get in the game. Number two, uh, it boosts your healing quite a bit. The biggest issue with Magic Templar, from my experience, is getting off your back bar so you can go front bar. And so having better healing, the damage mitigation you can get, everything that you get with Daedric Trickery is defensive. So when you deal damage, you gain one of five major random buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds. So when you do damage on the back bar, I have entropy back there. If, if you do apply a dot on the front bar and you go to your back bar, it will count. So every nine seconds, I can have a buff that lasts for 21 seconds. So if you do the quick math on that, that means you can have up to three major buffs at the same time. Typically, it's two. Sometimes it's three. Uh, roughly, you get 50% uptime on all the major buffs with this. Uh, eligible buffs are Expedition, Protection, Mending, Heroism, or Vitality. So you can have Vitality and Mending up at the same time, which is a ton of healing you can have heroism and protection which is damage mitigation and ultigen you can have expedition and heroism which is speed and ultigen everything that you get is a way to play defensive so either you're going to get your ult faster so you can pop defensive ults uh you get protection which is damage mitigation mending or vitality which is healing or expedition which is free speed you drop purify remove snares and you're going to be you're going to be fast and so all this is pretty nice uh, very, very nice set for back bar. The biggest thing for me that I like for 1vx with it is the heroism. Like, I wouldn't say D Daedric Trickery is the best defensive set in the game, but it's a really good defensive set that also doubles down to give you ulti gen, which is f extremely valuable in 1vx because ults are how you finish opponents. So that's what we're doing. Uh, back bar Daedric Trickery, I got the sturdy shield, defending. I mean, you can go Nurn, you can go Powered here. Uh, you also can go Decisive. 
Decisive back bar is also nice because if you're rolling major heroism and on your, you're on your back bar, uh, you have extra chances to proc that as well. I go back and forth. Sometimes I like defending. Sometimes I, it's not a big difference either way, in my opinion. Now, as far as the gear, like I said, we are five light, one medium, one heavy. Uh, I so I'm back barring Daedric Trickery. I have one piece. Uh, this is for BGs actually. So I'm sorry. So in BGs, I put on the Chudin because I need the extra tankiness. In open world PvP, I put on Scoria because Scoria, the one piece Scoria gives you the spell penetration. So spell penetration is the most bang for your buck damage you're going to get. Uh, it also buffs your procs. Uh, you, weapon and spell damage does not buff your proc damage, but having more pen does. Your procs will do more damage the more pen. Scoria makes a lot of sense. You can put a, lots of one piece on here, it doesn't matter. Like you said, like I showed you, I, I had Chudin on, Scoria's on, whatever. Uh, you could go weapon damage, you go one piece Balorg there if you choose, uh, but yeah. I think I went with the one piece because of how we're running it. And then uh, the other set, we're bodying Overwhelming Surge. So we got two jewelry, three body pieces of Overwhelming Surge. Uh, there are better proc, there are proc sets that do more damage, but what you get with Overwhelming Surge is incredibly powerful. You have Max Magicka, Spell Damage, Spell Damage. The two, three, and four piece is fantastic for a Magic Templar. You want to make sure your healing's good. Uh, having that type of Spell Damage built in, scaling with Trickery, makes your heals solid. And so that's, that's the main reason I liked it. But then the five piece, when you da deal damage with a class ability, you surround yourself to the Torrent that deals 1472 shock damage. Then to enemies within eight meters of you every one second for six seconds. So it's, it's okay damage. It hits up to six people. 15% of the damage you deal this way is restored to you as Magicka. This effect can occur every seven seconds. So there are better damage sets to run. Like you could run Icy Conjurer, you could run other burstier proc sets here. I like Overwhelming Surge for 1vx because it hits up to 6 people, and it also returns a lot of Magicka. So if you're fighting outnumbered, you're going to get a nice Magicka return. I, it, It's invaluable for me in that situation. So uh, you obviously can adjust things here, but, but yeah, I like Overwhelming for that reason. Like I said, you could make some adjustments here. Uh, we can obviously adjust gear. We can go with other proc sets. Uh, if we wanted to do like a heavy armor style proc set, like if we went heavy next patch, you could do like Oblivion's foe in heavy. Um, there, there's a bar, there, there's a spot on your bar to where you could fit Oblivion's foe, and that would be a fine proc set to fit. And then you could run heavy really easily. So, um, yeah, I went with overwhelming. Uh, we have, we do have arcane jewelry right now with magic or recovery now. You could go two infused with one recovery and one spell damage. It's probably the min-max version of it. I was testing a bunch of different gear. I have not done that yet, but I would I would go infused. I would go infused with one spell, with one magic or recovery, and then I would go infused with one spell damage. Uh, I was testing out Bloodthirsty. You can go infused here. Infused is really nice on a magic templar. Bloodthirsty is also nice for that execute damage. You're going to have a lot of pressure with this build to finish opponents. Uh, went back and forth. You can go two Bloodthirsty. You can go one. You can go zero. It, it really depends on what you want. If you really want to have more healing go and fuse spell damage here go and fuse spell damage here go recovery here and you're good to go if you're a high elf or dark elf you probably just go three recovery or two recovery two infused recovery one infused spell damage so high elf dark elf that's what i would do uh an argonian has a little bit less sustain in my experience than a breton so you'll probably add a little bit more recovery to an argonian also so uh yeah that's up to you the math on it i was i was comparing i was going to run overwhelming uh, a set like Grotar and Vatashrans because I wanted the AoE pressure and mathed out Malakath gave similar damage uh, just running Malakath gave similar damage to what Grotar was giving me the 25% to those two skills offset the, the loss of Grotar on top of that the 25% also buffs our overwhelming surge damage which means the more damage we do the more sustain we get so we sustain a little bit better with malakath and overwhelming surge uh than if we went grotdar with overwhelming surge and vatishrans so you can absolutely run two monster sets you had to take off malakath or you take off vatishrans i i think malakath and vatishrans is just better so yeah as far as our character sheet goes this is the back bar 35, 287, 28,000 health, 18, 5 stamina, 1,700 magic recovery. That's before a pot and before a rune. Uh, you may be wondering why my recovery is so high. Well, I'm also a stage 3 vampire. So if you guys have been watching my builds, I got Atrium, Atrium Mundus, stage 3 vampire. 
you can go health recovery. There, there are some really busted builds you can run with Mist Form and health recovery right now. Uh, if you do not go the health recovery route, stage three vampire is very, very nice. And so trickery stacked with stage three allows me to run light. Running light offsets the cost of stage three, giving me more pen. The pen allows me to do more damage. Magic Templar kind of lacks damage compared to a lot of other classes right now. So going light, if you can go light, it's going to boost your damage quite a bit. If you want to kill people, that's what you got to do. And so these are the, the sacrifices we're making so we can do a little bit more damage. Uh, yeah, as far as the skills on our back bar, extended ritual, honor the dead, elusive mist. You can run elusive mist or race against time with sword and board. I've always preferred elusive mist. It's just... It's a better fight resetter. We're also stage three vampires, so the cost of this is going to be pretty cheap. Channeled focus and degen. So this is what we'll cast at range to proc our trickery. This also gives us our major sorcery buff, more damage. We all know this. Back bar, you can run a couple things here. I really like spell wall. Spell wall is really nice when you're outnumbered 1vx because you got snipers. You got a bunch of people beating on you. You cast this, a uh, bunch of procs on you. I mean, it, it, it's a really nice defensive ult, and it's super cheap. And when we're running Danger Trickery and we're rolling Major Heroism, we're going to have this up quite a bit. It allows us to get to our, like, I'll be on my back bar defensively sometimes where I'm just misforming and I'm trying to stay alive, and then I'll come out, I'll pop my spell wall, and then when I switch to my other bar, I'll get, you know, the Vatishran's Destro rolling, the Vatishran's proc going, Overwhelming Surge basically procs immediately. And then on top of that, we just have so much AoE and we're taking no damage. That That's going to be our burst window sometimes. So uh, really valuable. Now, I kind of hinted at my ultimate. But Puncturing Sweep, top, Toppling Charge, Solar Barrage, Radiant Oppression. I don't use this a ton, but I use it sometimes. Uh, dodge Rolling people that, that are just slowly getting out of range. It's really nice to just quick zap them and take care of it. Uh, it's a very situational skill. I mean, <laughs> if you're in a large group, you just put rating on somebody and somebody else does damage and they die. Uh, when you're solo and you're trying to burst people, there's some there's some people that have really high healing. You're better off just sticking with sweeps and sweeping their face off. Uh, there's other people where they're going to try and dodge and they have lower healing and they're trying to like dodge roll away. Those are the people you zap. Sorks, if they try and streak away, you zap them. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Ellie Drain, this gives us our mag recovery. This also procs our Vatishrans. It also gives us more pen. We've got a lot of pen on this build, as you guys can tell. We're in light armor. We have this. We have the One Piece Scoria. Uh, the Vatishrans also gives us pen. So even though our character sheet doesn't look super sexy right now, uh, we got a lot of pen in there. So we actually dish out quite a bit of damage. And then Eye of Lightning. So I, some people are going to look at this and they're going to go, why not Crescent? And... I'll explain why. I don't know what they did to Crescent, but the damage just feels lower. It just, every time, like when I've used it, I've run no Malakath builds, I've run Malakath builds, I've run stat-based builds where I'm pushing over 5,000 spell damage and I have like 35,000 max Magicka, stacking as much spell damage as I can, which is similar to what I was running on my Magicka Templar a year ago. Uh, against Squishies a year ago, like just squishier individuals, I was hitting 15, 17k crescent sweeps. It would have to crit, it would have to be against a squishy individual, but I my crescents were hitting super hard. Now I'm I'm lucky if I hit a 12k crescent. I, I don't think I've hit higher than a 12k crescent this patch, and that's running 5,000 spell damage with Balorg. Balorg and Burning Spell Weave. I was I was stacking so much damage on a Magplar, and I think the highest crescent I hit was like 12k. And so it's cheap. Crescent's obviously cheap. I'm not saying it's bad. Like, I'm not saying Crescent is bad. It's just not as good as it used to be. It doesn't do as much burst. It's, it's a little bit more pressure-based. And so in that situation, it's not bad. Um, I dueled a guy on stream. And if he's watching this video, I'll, I'll give him a quick shout-out. But it, was, it didn't go anywhere because it was very laggy. I got very, very frustrated. Uh, so it, it never ended. But we dueled two different times. And... I was on a Stamina Necromancer. We all know Stamina Necromancers are super squishy. There's nothing tanky about or overpowered about a Stamina Necromancer at all, right? He's fighting me on his Magplar, and he's running Crescent. And it's like he's doing nothing to me. I'm stage 3 Vampire. I'm wearing Tager Trickery and Heavy. I'm on a Stamina, like, Stamina Necromancer Heavy Trickery. Like, he's not doing any damage. It's not his fault. It's just I'm, I'm a Necromancer. So we're fighting. It's not going anywhere. It's laggy. So we stop. He switches from Crescent to Destro Alt. 
And that's when he started doing a lot of pressure. He, every time I went, he went into Destro, I really had to be careful because he almost, he almost dropped me a couple times with Destro ult. And so it changes the fight. You don't have Crescent rolling all the time, but when you hit your Eye of Lightning, seven seconds of an AOE 5490, you know, this, it comes, jumps over 6K with, uh, with Major Sorcery, but yeah, 6K every second seven seconds you guys know what destro ult is it hits hard it's a big aoe uh and we're going to roll it with this we're going to roll it with this we're going to roll it with overwhelming surge we're going to overroll it we're going to roll it with our vatistrans destro we have a lot of aoe plarnado that's that's what i'm calling it right now um yeah it's just it's so much damage i think it's better and yes the cost is more expensive but that's why we're running trickery on the back bar We'll get major heroism. We'll get this up a little bit more. It's really nice for severely outnumbered. Like you go into a room, you got eight, nine, ten people on you. All of a sudden you pop a dash roll. You just go and you start spamming sweeps. A couple squishes are going to die. A couple squishes are going to die. It's it's really, really nice for that reason. So yeah, normal passives that you want as far as our CP goes. One in a Siphoner, 61 Warlord, 23 Mooncalf, 65 Arcanist, 43 in a Tenacity, 11 in a Tumbling, 66 Shadow Ward, 56 Blessed, 64 Ali Expert, 46 in a Spell Erosion, 81 Master at Arms because we had a lot of direct damage attacks, uh, Thaumaturge, 23, we got a couple dots, so it's worth putting a few points into there in my opinion. Uh, you can put a few more points in here if you want. Uh, yeah, uh, you're going to have to adjust your CP as you see fit. Ironclad, 72. 34 in resistant, 76 hardy, 56 LA defender, 32 into quick recovery. So that's the CP for a couple of weeks before they change the CP entirely. If we look at our front bar, unbuffed, 34,000 magicka, 17, 57 spell damage. So that's like 22, 2300-ish spell damage, 2200 recovery fully buffed. Uh, yeah, we're tanky because we have stage 3 vampire. We also have danger trickery, uh, which I feel like you need. You need to be tanky on a magplar for solo 1vx. Um, now, why did I choose what I cho chose? Like I said, I did a lot of testing. Um, procs are better. I've said this a lot. Procs are better than no procs. You guys know I don't like running procs. You guys, if you guys watched my, my build testing on my Magic Templar from a couple weeks ago, I posted two different videos. I wasn't running procs on either one of those. I, I had some success in small group play. Uh, Magplar is still solid in small group play, but, but in solo, you, you do lack a lot of bursts that you used to have. And I was testing with my buddy Blap, and even with 5,000 spell damage against some people, I was hitting less than 1,000 sweeps. Even with 5,000 spell damage, some people were just taking no sweep damage. They were taking no crescent damage, you know, four to 6K crescents. I had a 5K crescent on somebody that was a crit and with everything buffed, and I'm just sitting there like, seriously? I have 5,000 spell damage. Like, it shouldn't be this low. Like, it shouldn't be this low. So anyways, my point is, is, you guys can go the max stat route. You you 100% can, and you can have some like if you're a really good Magic Templar, you're gonna make it work. Like you can make you can make it work if you're a good player. It's just not going to be as effective. And and I tried, guys. I really did. I looked at Purifying Light, looked at stacking Max Magicka, and it just doesn't hit hard enough to fit on your bar. Uh, so burst combinations. I looked at crit base sets or crit base combinations. I couldn't get a bursty enough combination to really want to run a crit based non Malakath build. And so it's just the combination of the nerfs that they did to the class, as well as the nerfs that they did to crit chance. It's just not worth building into crit chance in my opinion. Plus the base impen that they gave to all these characters, all these things add up and it's just, they're all just nerfs to magic Templar. And so, um, I put on procs. <laughs> that it, it it was better anyways it's just the no-brainer if you're if you're going to go and play solo magic mag, magic templar outnumbered i think you you want you want to run procs and then as far as back bar defensive sets i think trickery is nice because it's crafted if you don't run trickery and you want a back bar set you could run steadfast hero uh you could back bar a set like iron blood if you so chose uh there's a f Specter's Eye isn't a bad option. Uh, there's a few different options that you can choose for a back bar set. I think Trickery is personally the best. But yeah, Steadfast Hero works really well. I don't have any pieces on me, but that's the one when you purify, you get major protection. You basically have 100% uptime on major protection if you back bar Steadfast. So you run Crimson back bar, 100%. Um, 
I like the trickery for the increased healing. I like to be able to heal myself a bit more and heal other people a bit more. It's really nice when you have mending rolling and, and you're hitting fat heals. So uh, that's why I chose trickery. Obviously with Destrold also uh, just a little bit better than Crimson in my opinion, but Crimson's, Crimson's going to save you when you're fighting 10 plus people. Um, trickery just allows you to get your ult and you know, potentially finish fights a little bit quicker. So it's up to you on what you want to choose. If you want to make the crimson farm, if you want to get trickery, which is crafted, like I said, it's just a little bit easier to do. So uh, I have some gameplay of this build in action. Um, I've been posting other similar, like non proc play styles. So if you guys don't want to run procs for whatever reason, the best combination that I found that I enjoyed was spinners, Malakath, Backbar, Trickery, and Balorg. Uh, if you want to go no proc damage, it's still not very like I like spinners more than stun because I don't like the potential downtime on stun. I don't have to like having to rely on toppling charge consistently to get the pen for stun. Um, toppling charge is just really buggy sometimes, so I don't like to use it unless I really have to. And so that set's just kind of eh for me. I'd rather just have spinners all the time. I, th I found that better than Burning Spell Weave. Burning Spell Weave is very nice, but the skill that's attached to it isn't very good. So yeah, I would just go spinners. Uh, you could, there's a few different options for no proc, but they're not gonna be as good as procs. It's just not. So uh, maybe someday they'll make the, those adjustments, but it's not this day. It doesn't look like it's going to be this next patch. Uh, that'll be for a different video also. If you guys have any questions or comments, Obviously, please provide in the section below. I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, but yeah, this this build's been a lot of fun for me. You go in, it works in BGs, it works in CP, no CP, uh, solo in a group. You just have a lot of AOE damage, a lot of AOE pressure, uh, and things die, which doesn't always happen when you're playing solo Magic Templars. So yeah, uh, I'm going to end it here. Let's get to the footage.
soul about humanity.